Hey, welcome back to Random American, and today we're getting into the fuel system. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get it all in today. Things have not been going to schedule. So, let's go and get into it. Alright, so first things first, I'm going to go over what all we got. I got a whole bunch of stuff from Evil Energy. Everybody says this is who I need to go through for cheap AN fittings that uh, actually you know, work. I got this kit here for, I don't know, 80 or 90 bucks. I'll put a screenshot up here. Uh, it comes with all sorts of different fittings. It's pretty nice, actually. Uh, and comes with 180s, straights, 45s, a um, bunch of straight fittings. And it's all 6AN. I got everything in 6AN. I got a couple of these here fittings from them that will go onto my fuel rail and these ones are 3 8 and then I believe if you have a return style it's a 5 16 don't hold me to that look at it first and all you do is you put this on the back side you slide that on there and then you thread it in I'm not gonna do that right now because I need to clean that up and lubricate it some uh, I also got this here sending unit. I think I got this off Rock Auto, maybe. I don't know. But this is a 87 sending unit, 87 or 88. Uh, you just have to make sure it has a area for a fuel pump. Then I got this here Carter fuel pump off Rock Auto. It was the cheapest that I could find, reasonably. Uh, you have to make sure that you get a fuel pump for a 97 because it will supply enough pressure up to your fuel rail. The 87, 88, 89s, all that with the older throttle body, they don't. I think they're only like 12 pounds or something. This one, slightly more expensive, but this does like 97 PSI. Uh, then because you have to regulate that down to 58 pounds. I got Evil Energy, a Corvette fuel filter regulator, and it comes with fittings. Now there's been some grouch asses that say that uh, this is just going to fail unless you get the $100 uh, set up and you'll end up with a standard regulator anyways. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this for now anyway and if this shits the bed on me then I guess they're right and we'll be going to a standard regulator but that's not today. Uh, the fittings that come with this are pretty complete. I haven't even taken them out of the package but it comes with pretty well everything you need and the stuff that the fittings that this comes with you can reuse on a, another filter regulator setup. So it has the exact same style as this right here. Slide on, screw it together, all that fancy stuff. And then this side, this cool little dude right here, just boop, straight in and you're good. Just like your standard filter regulator, whatnot. So that's pretty cool. First thing I'm gonna do because I'm going to avoid the sending unit for now, is I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and put some molly coat on this and slide that all together. Uh, I will have to put my injectors in this rail and we'll probably get that get to that dead last because that'll have to go on the intake. Then I want everything else to be done before that because I'm a coward. Uh, I have a plug off of this harness that I'm going to use for my fuel pump plug because obviously I don't have that plug anywhere so I'm going to get my nice fresh brand new sending unit and start cutting on it. Uh, I got some compression fittings for these which you absolutely have to have. Uh, there's I don't think you're going to hold 100 pounds with hose clamps and a single barb. And lastly I got uh, compression fittings that are also 6AN. Uh, not for this side, obviously. It's for up here. I, you don't have to run AN fittings up here, but it's sure cool if you do. 
because uh, apparently it makes it super easy. So let's go ahead and get into the fuel rail real quick. Then we'll move to the, basically moving from the front of the truck to the back of the truck, because that seems like the easiest way to do it. Okay, got some memory cloth. I want to use a grinding belt. <laughs> way too much, I think it's like the 80 grit or 60 grit maybe. But anyway, just gonna try and get the rust cleaned off of this. There ain't too much. Uh, not sure if I've told you 37 times yet, but I got this off of eBay. It was like 15 bucks for the rail, but like $40 for shipping. So, and in all reality, what I should have done is guy over the hill that does these all the time. I should have just called him and said, hey man, do you have any of them laying around? Because he asked me yesterday if I had already replaced it because he was going to sell me one super cheap. And I could have had it in 20 minutes rather than three days and $40. Okay. That wiped off. Ah, oh, this thing's covered. Just a little bit of this on there. And this molly coat, all it is, like I've said before, is it's just a uh, o-ring lubricant and it'll keep them soft for a while but it all also works like a dielectric grease so it's not gonna interfere with grounding or anything like that if you use it for other stuff i like it a lot you can also use just regular old grease dielectric grease work, works great man that looks slick okay you just get the back side and you thread that on. I don't have a AN wrench, so I got two croissant wrenches. How many of you hear a difference? Yeah. So, the Milwaukee wrench, croissant wrench, I'm gonna go back here where it has much less purchase. This one will go up here where it has much more. Just tighten that up. Not too terribly much because I still want it to, you know, come off. And I like the threads how they are, all thready. Oh. <laughs> it's right there. Pretty sure I'm just going to do a straight on this one, but I'll just have that set in there for good measure. For the moment. Now we've got that out of the way, uh, move on to the fill tray. The thing that does the watch and who's to keep you from blowing your injectors out. You would think that a guy would have things organized before I fired up the old camera, but I don't. Okay. Same song and dance here. Go ahead and give this a little bit of a good luck charm. Man, that fits nice. Now this one, I might have to bend it out just a little bit. I did hear a few people say that. So with the Evil Energy ones, they just fit. That's pretty nice. Make sure this is grounded because it can create static in there and that's how you get fires. You know, I like fires, not that much. And the scariest part of all is this. 
connecting this all together. Okay, so I'll start with the wiring. So I'll use my blue on this side for the gray, which is, so gray is fuel pump power, uh, purple is your sending unit, and then obviously this is ground. So I'll use the blue, which is also the red, or pink, to run the power. Same thing as the rest of your harness. Just get this and solder it on together. All right, now that we've got our plug all set up and whatnot, go ahead and put this back over all of this. Maybe. Good God. There we go. Same as nothing. Uh, I'll go ahead and get some tape and tape this up. Right in here, I'll probably tape down to the plug, excluding the ground wire. All right, that should give me a good spot in the frame, and then I should be able to figure the rest of this out. Next, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get a get my grinder with the wrong size wheel. And all I'm doing is I'm cutting the barb off of these on either end so I can slip my compression fitting over the end of it. All there is to it. Probably. Uh, this one is just my tank vent. I'm gonna leave it how it is because I'm just gonna run a piece of hose up to wherever and it doesn't have, it shouldn't have any pressure on it, you know. But we'll see. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and get these snipped down and uh, get our compression fittings on. Okay, now that you just saw me do it the wrong way on a part that I really don't want to replace, just go ahead and ruin my pocket knife real quick. Get everything deburred here on the inside. Oh yeah, that'll never be sharp again. Go ahead and knock the roll on the outside off. This might take me a minute. Okay, so <clears throat> I have the ends cut off and I did some test fitting. And I'm going to have to go ahead and cut off at least this support. Probably would have made more sense if I went ahead and tried the other one too. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut off both of them. Because I need this to go in there a certain distance and those supports are in the way. So let's see if I can do this with the wrong things. Uh, I'm going to see if I can just get a hacksaw blade and cut that by hand because I really don't feel like getting a grinder in here and poking a hole in this. You know, more holes than it already has. Well, that took longer than I thought. My wife lured me into the house with egg salad sandwiches and ramen noodles. Works every time. So I'm just going to get this here blade taken off. Kind of have to hurry with this a little bit. Uh, I found a rear end over at the farm that I can use in the truck, and I'm meeting a buddy of mine over there to pick it up and get it here. It will require some modification, but we'll go we'll cross that bridge whenever we go to burn it or whatever. There we go.
could stop bleeding, that'd be great. Okay. Oh yeah, just like it was made for it. So there's that one, and there's that one, and they look beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these tightened up on there. And go get a rear end. Those are on there pretty good. Uh, let me check the time. Yeah, I need to get going. <clears throat> we'll be back with this uh, next time. Well, here in just a second. For you, at least. Uh, we're going to be over at the farm. Getting things and whatnot. <clears throat> now that I have help, even though one of them's an asshole. Uh, That's no way to talk about Dallas. Uh, this is the 14 bolt that I have to move the spring purchase in on. It's out of a 90 something or other. Uh, I'm going to pull the rear cover off, make sure it's not metal soup. If it is, then I'm just going home and working on the fuel system the rest of the day. If not, I have slave labor. That snap-on impact's probably pretty wore out. <laughs> I got it cheaper than hell. I got it. Uh, they're compact, impact, and a drill and a half inch for, I think, $400? That ain't bad. And a battery for each. It's leaking. That's not good. It's leaking. Fucking dumping out of there. There you go. It's not soup. That actually looks no shit. Kind of decent. It's I mean, good. it's low. What's it frost? What's it taste yeah. like? Oh, it actually turns now. I bet it just had a bunch of horse shit in there. I mean, concrete dust from this concrete shop. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have to get this out of here, which, what I was thinking, is we drag it. How heavy is it? Fucking heavy. Yep. Yeah, very. That's a hemorrhoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if the tractor didn't have a flat tire and I had an air compressor in the back of my truck, I'd just go get the tractor. You got a long stick in the chain? Uh, like stick stick or uh, just anything, a T post, anything. I can make a how I drag logs. Uh, we'll have to look around. But I'm sure we can find something. Yeah, we can I know I can find T post somewhere. Because that hook ain't going to go all the way through it. Yeah. Roll that up. Just work 
Don't bust yourself in the face, please. Works a lot better with about six foot cherry lock. <laughs> Here, babe. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> the, the exact thing that I wanted them for in the first <laughs> place. Yeah, the bitch mittens. This is what you need Chris for. Yeah. He'd just, he, oh, I was talking about his friend Chris. He'd just pick it up and carry it to the truck. Oh, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, strong man Chris. Oh, God damn. <laughs> we can pick it up, but it carrying it ain't a good idea. No. I see stars. <laughs> You're a star. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, babe. Uh, your flippy do over here is going to catch on the lawnmower. I don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> don't sit down there. Huh? Don't sit down there. <laughs> Three, two, one. Ah. Well, the rear end is back here at the house. Now let's go work on fuel system some more before it gets dark. As you just saw, we have the rear differential back over here. I'm uh, gonna get back on this. It's getting later in the day than I really wanted, but that's okay. That's perfectly fine. We have to set the fuel system in tomorrow. That's not a big deal because once we get this done, it's just putting the tank in or putting the, oh, we'll put this in the tank today. Putting the tank in, setting it up there, and running my lines over, and we might have an hour in it with making the the old AN connections. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the pump and all that together. These pumps come with a uh, rubber sleeve around them, and you really want to make sure that you put that on because that is a big way as to how this keeps cool because it'll kind of keep um, gas in here and it'll dissipate heat a lot better so don't forget these got a check valve in there fancy uh, where's my there it is let's see I got yeah. I'm just going to use these regular hose clamps that this one came with. I think this came from the sending unit. Because this one, that's not it. It must be in the box for it. But it came with the crimp style. They work a lot better. But I don't have the little tool to crimp it. 
and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to spend any more money. I'm already way too deep. All right. Get a hose. See how easily this will go on here. Not very, which is good. You know, it's not the worst thing. So I'll get this. I'll shove it on to here, up just as far as I can. Hopefully I'll make it to the top of that dimple right there. And I will set the pump here next to it, see where I gotta cut it, and I'll shove the pump on. That much. That was scientifically measured. Oh, I didn't get my knife out. I used the wrong thumb to mark it. A little bit of a mark on there, so I don't cut myself for the second time today. So the good news is they give you just over twice as much, so you can screw it up at least once. And that's the kind of forward thinking that I need. Uh -oh. I'm going to be safe, and I'm going to lubricate that just a tickle where did I put it I am going to run a fuel gauge so if any of this screws up I'll know rather quickly perfection now to remember your damn hose clamps before you put this together Remember that thing about the hose clamp? Well, it ain't coming off. I'm just going to do it the hard way. Whenever you tighten these up, you tighten them until the hose starts to deteriorate right before your eyes. It's tight enough. Maybe even half a turn before that. that right there. Perfection. Uh, I really don't want that rubbing on that there hose clamp. I probably should have put it. Oh, no, we're good. Eh. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, so there's the top part built. And then, last thing, you just put your Put your sock on. It's like a sock hop, but you know, different. Make sure whenever you put the filter sock on that this is it. This is the last piece because it's got little barbs in here, and trying to get those back out and then reuse it is it's not a good time. That's probably the complete wrong direction. But it's going to work. Speaking of that, I'm going to clear this off of here, and we'll get the, the old fuel tank and set it in. Because I know I'm getting my grubby little fingers all over it, but I would still like to, you know, get this set in to keep it from getting more in there so be back in just a second all righty we got the made in taiwan tank up here i uh, got an o-ring i got a, another ringy thingy and we got our sending unit that's all primed and ready to go so let's go ahead and get this set in here just easy does it Back out, back out, back out. Put the seal on here. I know I probably could have done it from the other side. I guess that doesn't make sense as to why it has to go that way.
this a little bit. much care for that, but I did it. Screwed up my sock just a little, but I think that'll work better for us. First try. Right, I'm this over. Now that be locked in there and there ain't nothing you can do about it. So it's getting dark and it's been cold all day. Let me see. And I don't feel like laying in water. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, it feels like 15. Tomorrow's a high of 41. So tomorrow we'll go ahead and get this set in there. And we should be pretty square. I will actually clean up the seats that I have sitting over here that are going in this thing temporarily. But I'm going to go ahead and bring them up here. And we're going to get them uh, uh, sucked out because they have been in the barn and they are not good. I can tell you that. So get them cleaned up. They'll they'll be in the truck for at least a little bit before I can get the other ones. And but this is all done. The fuel tank's ready to go in. All of the rest of the fuel system's ready to go in. The only thing we'll have to do is make some AN connections. And I don't think it will be that bad. But I've never done it. I'm going to have to change the wheel on my grinder, actually. I'm going to have to change it to a cutting wheel. I have one. I just don't want to change it. But, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. Because I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a wimp, and I don't want to be out there. So, let's get to cleaning up some seats. Get some other stuff prepared. Well, I lied. Uh, I, forgot, I forgot I have to put my injectors and my fuel rail on this, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll get the seat. So, I have my injectors. I sprayed a whole bunch of rust out of them. Hopefully they're okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with this. So I'm going to go ahead and molly coat these up. And I'm going to plop. That's fine. And I'm going to plop these into the rail. And then I'm going to plop it onto the intake. So, we'll get it done. I had to take the wool hoodie off because she was getting warm. I should probably go ahead and just take this off. Oh, it's got one of those stupid clamps on it. It's getting cut. Pretty sure this is just a coolant line anyway. <clears throat> Alrighty. Damn, after this one, I have to start being nice to it. Ugh. bit on that there overing. I'll put some on this one too since I put way too much on my finger. Just so you know, getting these things off of this fuel rail, or the old fuel rail, was not a good time. I promise. Oh, and it just... Well, that's full of shit. Pulling these off of there, I had to use all of my strength. I promise. I'm not... I'm not screwing with you. It was not a good time. So, what the hell? Yeah, I've never worked on an LS, but if this is what it's like, then 
Ooh. No kiss. It's not bad. Just put a little bit, of, little bit of schmutz on here. A little bit of whatnot. A little bit of goop. <laughs> it just... This is luxury. Is this what not having filthy parts is like? So I wasn't kidding about the uh, mountain of rust coming out of four of these injectors. So if I go to start this thing, and I've got a bunch of cylinders not getting fuel, I know exactly why. I really don't want to buy new injectors, but if I have to, then, you know. just so nice. I'm telling you, I damn near had to have a slide hammer to get those other ones out. I don't know how I didn't break these trying to do it. It was just... So I have three out of four. Well, oh, I need to put the clips on too. Damn. I knew I was forgetting something. Have these little clips here that go on top. I mean, you know what? It's so easy to take on. Go ahead and pop this off. Moved so easy that it even left one. So I'm learning, just kind of shove these straight on, <clears throat> and then shove that on with a little bit of a wiggle maybe. Yeah, there we go. Those all seem to be clipped in, whether it's right or not. I'm not the guy to ask. This is another one that's pretty well screwed up. Okay. Intakes together. Fuel rails on. Injectors are in. I think... Now I'll clean up seats. I'm gonna go get the little orange egg and bring it on in here. So this is how the seats look. As you can see, been in the barn for quite a while. They collected some sawdust, collected a lot of regular dust. Uh, these won't be the permanent seats, but I think I can do at least a little bit better than this for them right now so let's go ahead and show you what they look like after a, oh, a quick suck
not sure if you can tell a difference or not from this to that, but it's good enough for me. It's still a little bit dirty. Uh, all of my detail guys out there that are actually watching this, go ahead and tell me what I did wrong. And that includes you, Kevin. I know you're watching. I always do. So, yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and grease the tracks on these right now, and then we'll go ahead and move to the next step. Okay, so we're back with wiring. Uh, I know this looks like more of a mess than ever, but very important news. Um, you need, need, need to go to lt1swap.com. Um, I can see if I can leave a link in the description. I don't get anything from you guys going to them. That needs to be where you look for everything if you're in doubt for any part of this. Because I was going through my wiring harness again, and there was a couple of wires for my transmission that weren't in the right spot. I don't know if I had pulled them out and put them back in in the wrong spot or what all happened with it, but I needed to put those back in the right spot. And they give a list of things that uh, need to go in that aren't directly connected to the engine and transmission itself. So, like, uh, for instance, let's use this one. Torque converter uh, brake switch. So, what this is, is this will go to a, uh, so, this will go to a brake switch with four pins on it. So, your first, your original two pins will be for your regular switch whenever you hit the brakes. Your reverse light, or reverse lights, your brake lights come on. And whenever you hit the uh, switch, it also cuts power to this. So one side of the switch is constant on, the other side of the switch is constant off until you hit the brakes. Well, the constant on is for your torque converter, so whenever you touch the brakes, it lets the ECM know that you have hit the brakes and to unlock the torque converter so you can slow down a lot more smoothly. So, it gives you a list of things like that and like your fuel pump relay, and just, just stuff that you need to hook up outside of the uh, engine transmission itself. So I have a cruise control, um, like a vehicle speed sensor um, wire for your cruise control. If you want to put that in, I might, it's hard to tell. My OBD2 wire, my TAC, my fuel pump, and my check engine light. Uh, I got this plug that I had removed from the harness, and it had just enough wires on one side and a couple too many on the other. So I came through here and I just labeled which ones I wanted to be which. And I'm going to go ahead and repin the harness because every one of these have a ECM pin on them. And then I will have a waterproof actual connection to go to everything on my dash or wherever it needs to go. I think that'll be a lot more handy than, you know, just singular wires like I was going to do. So same thing is whenever you're depinning. Because that's all we're doing is you're going to take that off. This one I already have marked out. It's my uh, torque converter release. I'm going to shove that forward. I'm going to pull this little tab back while I shove down. And oh, boom, that came straight out. This should go over to the fuse block. I won't need it anymore. And then I'm going to go over here and find the one that I have for my torque converter brake switch, purple over here, purple and white here, yeah, you come here, dang, it'd be nice if I remember which one I was on, I'm going to go back through and double check these, but then you just shove it right on in, oh, 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 shove it all the way through, and then you'll give her a slight tug back, a-okay. Let me see where the next one's supposed to go. That was pin 33, right? 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 I can't see nothing. Nope, I put it in the wrong one. That's why you double check. Put it in like 27 or something. Thirty-three. There we go. 
See, I was just testing you, and you passed. Congratulations. Uh, then pin 42, it's empty, but you can use it for uh, electric fans. Uh, serial data, which is your uh, data wire for your OBD2. Just double check, I'm pretty sure I made that one green still. Yeah. 58. All right, that still currently has a wire in it, which is good. Because if not, I was going to be concerned. Same thing, shove that through, pull a little tab back, shove it down through, bam. Perfection. Look at that. Okay, not all of them go on the blue side. Let me see. This will also tell you your uh, hot wires and all that, where they're supposed to go, if they're supposed to be hot at all times, if they're supposed to be keyed hot, all that good stuff. Fuel pump relay, that one I made gray. Because I only had so many green wires. <laughs> <clears throat> Pin number nine, fuel pump relay. All right. All right. Had the better half call. She was telling me stuff and whatnot. So we moved from fuel pump relay to engine speed signal, which is pin number 10. And Oh, which, damn, which one's RPM again? Which is just RPM. Damn it, I mean, okay, it's white. All right, pin number 10, RPM. Control 46, 46. Okay, I do have that one deep in. Number 46 is your uh, check engine light. Which one did I make that? Maybe I made it the black. Nope, that's cruise. Check engine light is yellow. Oh, yeah, I made it yellow because check engine lights are yellow. That's supposed to be 46. Yep, 46. So we'll move on to 50, which is vehicle speed for cruise control. I know I have that one as black. Uh, you can also use this on certain, uh, uh, what do I want to say here, uh, speedometers that take a factory GM uh, 4,000 uh, pulses per, per mile signal which to me is kind of wild. Is that all of them? No, it can't be. It's gotta be, I'm looking right at it. Let me see, you going, yeah, that's all of them. But again, lt1swap.com, dude knows what he's talking about. He actually, I'm pretty sure he was in charge of the wiring of these engines from their start until, like mid to late 2000s, maybe 2010, 2012, something like that. He was around for a while. So I'm going to go through here, find all the ones that I had to take out. Okay, yeah, so I can just go ahead and deep in my oil pressure sensor altogether because I'm running mechanical. I'm not going to be running 
factory and this ECM doesn't give a damn about oil pressure, which I find terrifying. Okay, so now that we have the spaghetti soup, all I'm going to do is we're going to go on through here and pretty well just, this is what hooks to your fuse block, uh, chop her off. That's it. Um, all of these pink wires are pretty well just going to go to one singular fuse. I, I might, if I'm going to be, I don't know, I might run all the ECM stuff to the coil uh, fuse and then the fuel injectors to the fuel pump fuse, just because, I guess. But, uh, yeah, pretty much you can just run all these pink wires the same damn one, and they never pull so much voltage that it actually blows a fuse, which to me is insane. But to be fair, uh, all of your fuel injectors are on one fuse anyway, and your ECM, all of that is on one fuse anyway. So I didn't really think about it until it was explained to me, but yeah. That kind of makes sense. Uh, I have a couple of wires here that I'm going to track down once I get this here cut. And I will... Oh, there's one I don't need. And I'll see where they go and then fuse them accordingly. But that's it, guys, I swear. Is this a... Okay, that's a ground. All on the grounds, I'm going to buy a bus bar, put all the grounds on, and that will be direct battery ground, so there's no questions about anything. But yeah, it's really as simple as that. You just cut this bastard right off, and it pretty well just does the work for you. So, it's 11 bajillion o'clock. And I think I'm going to go to bed, and I will see you guys tomorrow when we're putting the fuel system actually up into the truck and taking the engine transmission back out of the truck. Awesome. Um, tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get the fuel system in, and we'll get the engine mounts done. I might clean up some of this tonight, because as you can see... This is terrifying. And I'd like to just put it in the truck and be done with it. We're getting so, so close. Uh, I'll have Dallas help me with the rear end. And man, we're, we're making progress. <sighs> All right. So it's the next day, next af afternoon. I kind of have a slow start today, but I already took the engine out of the truck because I kind of had to in order to do the motor mounts and I figured the extra space for doing putting the fuel system in ain't going to hurt my feelings any. So, put on my bitch mittens and get one of my dead batteries. One bar. Perfect. So I read the instructions very vaguely. But it seems pretty straightforward. These are just riveted through. You drill far enough just to knock the rivet out on each of them. You take the old one out, you put the new one in. They provide you a couple of zip ties to help hold this together while you get it to the truck and hold it up with one hand and do the monkey dance trying to get it back in. So, let's see. Oh God, that is soft. They said a 3 8 bit to do this, which I have no doubts the 3 8 bit will do it. I don't know if I drill through that side. I'll do it if I got to, because they keep pissing me off. You know, a vice would be exactly what I need. And I have one in the basement. It's dirty down there. Come on, please. There we go. That knocks 
rivet out. Maybe. Hell, I'm just going to all the way through this anyway. Move stuff out of the way for dramatic effect. I'd do it. Yep. I got a truck over at the farm that I can actually, I thought it was this one, it's not. It's, one, it's the one the Perkins is going into. Uh, I can just grab this and pull it out. Perfect. Probably scrape some of this stuff out of here. Clean it up a little. Okay. Huh. Weird. I don't think it fits. <laughs> like it's supposed to. Okay. Just like that, I think. If not, that's how it's going to be. I mean, they're right. These are easy to do. I'll go ahead and knock out the second one, and we'll call her good. So I wasn't going to make a big fuss out of this, because, you know, it's just changing the fuel tank over. But look at this craftsmanship. <laughs> so what they did is they broke this off trying to get this out and then just cut it and found a nut that would kind of sort of screw onto that and then attach that to a bolt back here. How in the Okay, so that nut will come off. What I'll probably do is I'll cut this a little bit shorter, get some half inch all thread, weld that to it, and then, well, maybe three eighths all thread. I don't know. Some kind of all thread, and then run it through. Hi, baby girl. Who the hell does that? Huh. And do anything else first. They did that. It's heavy. Oh, I got 10 gallon of fuel on it. Oh, hell. Jesus. Was this thing com oh, it was completely crushed. That's why. <sighs> I guess I'm getting new tank straps. Let's see if I can get one of these done. Let's see if I can get one of these connected. And if I can, I'll show you. can't and I'll just keep figuring it out until I can and then I'll show you. Well I think I got this on correctly so the next one I'll show you how I did it which I just followed the instructions but still uh, I'm gonna get this tank 
up there with two bolts. I'm going to run this over. I'm going to figure out where I want my regulator filter to be. And then I'll just mark it and we'll go and make another cut. This will keep me dry for like three seconds. That's better than nothing. All right, let's see. Let's see. So right here is where the tank, uh, the fuel line will come through. My sending unit's just right over there. I do have a lot of room here, but remember this body lift is coming off, so I don't wanna do that. But right here is a little hole that I have no idea what it goes to or what it went to or whatever but I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, regulator slash filter right there. So it should be protected from most things. So let's go, I'm gonna go ahead and buff this off and I'll find a bolt to hold that on and I will cut or I will uh, mark this where I need to cut it and we'll go make a, make a cut. Alrighty, so I have it uh, marked where I need to cut. I'm just gonna take some tape and I'm gonna tape on one side of it and tape on the other. So whenever I cut this, I'll have a pretty good spot marked out. And it'll keep this from uh, fraying apart on me. I don't have to be super precise with this. I didn't uh, cut it exact or mark it exact. I gave, gave myself a little bit of room. I'd rather have too much slack and have to find something to do with it than the other way around. And I'm not building a SEMA truck. I'm building something that's just barely a going to town rig. So, yeah. And how I'm going to do it is this is my this is my high pressure side. Then I'm going to make basically the exact same one, just a little bit longer, and that will be my return side. And then I'll go ahead and put my last fitting going out for my. Uh, uh, pressure to the for my pressure to the fuel rail so that's the plan I'm going to put in some hair protection and we're going to cut this off with cutoff wheel that turn that up a little bit.
biggest thing I want to focus on with this is uh, trying to get a square cut if I can. And then there's a tool for rounding this out, but I need to get some of the some little extra doodabbies out of here. So according to the restructions, you get this little dude. I don't know if I can do it with the tape there. This does have to go on first. Make sure you put this on first. It's just like a damn brake line flare. So the instructions say to take the tape off. All right, all right. And then you kind of flare this out. Well, your wire, you get it flared out just a bit. Or this little guy slide underneath there and they say make sure that you don't get a single wire underneath of the little compressor thing from Bob Doohickey. They called it something. I forget. Why didn't it That's supposed to go back up and over. So I didn't do the do the thing correctly. Ooh. And the first one was flawless. If you guys could have seen it. I mean, you could have, but I'm very sure that I was going to screw it up. I was going to have to do it four times. Let's make sure this is seated all the way. That side is not. I might make this my return line and then see if I do better on the next one. Definitely feels like it's on there. So we'll see how I feel whenever we go to put it all together. Hell, for all I know, this is just a half inch too short. Oh, oh well. I'll finger it out. Go from there. Like I guess I'll just add it. Inches. This one already had some slack in it. Which I was not mad about. All right, and that'll be pretty well how I do this one. And I'm going to do the same thing with the last fitting that goes up to the uh, uh, fuel rail. So that's all the more I've got for right now. I'm going to go ahead and knock this out, and I'll join you back down there whenever I get this all in, because it's not a whole lot to it. Uh, and after this, we'll wire in the fuel pump. Maybe. No, I'm not going to wire in the fuel pump until I have the harness in, because I have a fuel pump wire 
for that. I'm going to set up my uh, relay and all that. So I'm going to get this cut. I'm going to get a fitting on it. Well, fitting on both ends. And then I'm going to get a fitting on this main piece. And we'll run this down there. And I don't know. We'll come up with something after that. Well, while I'm waiting on parts, uh, let's go ahead and throw the wiring harness in, test fit that a little bit, maybe figure out where we're going to put the ECM. Okay, so I have this roughly wired in. It looks like an absolute mess, mostly because it is. But what I'm going to do is I have it kind of marked off here with tape. So that's where I'm going to wrap all this into kind of like a main harness and clean it up a bunch because this is kind of how I want everything run. And between you, me, and the trees, I don't have to pay for tape. So I don't care how much it takes. Still need... Still need to get all that wired in, but that's a project for not right now. Uh, whenever I clean this up, I'll get all of my grounds and wire them in to a central bus bar, well, a central wire and then into a bus bar. So those will be pretty secure. <clears throat> I am going to have to do something for in here because this front injector wire won't reach because it was originally meant to go right here. So this will be separate. And this will be separate. This will be up underneath of the uh, uh, brake booster. And this over here, I'll just find a way to hold it up away from the heat. Try and keep from cooking those wires as much as possible. I am going to have to slide the engine back. Uh, I had it in the right spot originally. But I wasn't going to be able to get it in with the transmission. So I'm going to kind of have to shoehorn this thing in here a little bit. One thing that I absolutely do have to do is plug up this hole right here plug up this hole right here, and then figure out a way to grommet all this in here. I'll figure out something for right here where the fuse block used to be. Let me go ahead and show you how I'm running it inside there. That's quite exciting, I think. So obviously come through right here where the fuse block used to be, but then I'm gonna go, oh, you can't see what to do. Then I'm gonna go up over the steering column here, over to there where my throttle cable used to go through. And oh. and it'll sit in there just perfect as can be. Oh, this is tough. Anyway, that is the oops. that's the idea of the wiring on this. So now I got to get all this back out of here because I have a lot to wrap. All right, so real quick, the only thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take the intake off. I'm going to disconnect the motor mounts on both sides. I'm going to disconnect one motor mount at a time. I'm going to lift this up with a cherry picker enough to uh, disconnect the, oh, the mount itself from my adapter. And we're going to just try and slide this thing back. I have a ratchet strap back there underneath the pan. I rearrange it to where it comes over top of the frame so it'll actually, you know, lift it so i'm gonna get to that all right so it slid back we actually have room doesn't look like it i have to move that bolt a little bit but we have all the room in the world up here we actually have enough room around back for everything so the next thing that needs to be done this has to come out of here i'm going to try and use the hydro boost 
might be able to use this master cylinder maybe not i'm not 100 percent sure on that one just yet so let's go ahead and get that out and get this separated from here because i don't feel like screwing with these lines just yet unless i absolutely have to because they've not had a good time so let's get to that Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this wrapped up. I only have one roll of tape, so definitely not getting through all of it, but I can do something. And I'll just go as far as I can, then I'll go back. And it's simple. I just have my spots uh, marked out for what's doing what. So I'm just going to start down here and I'm going to worry about those problems whenever I come to them. <clears throat> the wife came in to harass me, so I made a little bit of progress while she was doing that. And it's real basic. I'm just taking the places that I had marked with tape yesterday and just splitting the harness off where it needs to be. And I'll show you how I did that in just a second. Uh, just so we're even and we know where everything's at. I do plan to uh, loom this eventually because this is the worst tape I could possibly think of. But, I don't know if I should just get some off of Amazon or if there's somebody that's actually worth a damn. So if anybody knows, <clears throat> go ahead and let me know. That'd be, that'd be great. And it doesn't matter to me if it's factory style or what the hell it is. Just something to protect it a little bit. <clears throat> this is what I got so far. Oh, this tape is terrible. Comes all the way through here. Help up off of that. Uh, this still needs to be taped up, obviously. Uh, not a hundred percent sure how far I'll go. I guess I'll get right here. Maybe, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Come back for some wire. I got this side mostly done. Neutral safety switch over here. I need to go down it because that grabs a lot. I need to go down this. This is my O2 sensor. <clears throat> well, one of my O2 sensors, I should say. And then I need to work down, well, all of that. But you get the idea. I'm looming it with uh, tape, which even I don't like to do, and I do some janky shit. But I'll go ahead and show how I wire this off. Wherever I put my tape. Start kind of from scratch on it. Get a couple of good wraps to keep this junk ass tape going. And then I'll wrap around and then I'll start going up. Just like that. 
And again, I don't know how far I have to go on this, so I'm just gonna leave this how it is. I'll get this hooked up and then I'll go back and wrap it because that's super easy to do, honestly. <clears throat> so if you learn anything from this, I mean, possibly two rolls of good tape and you can have your harness wrapped. Or I don't recommend getting to this point at all. If we're being honest between you, me, and the trees, uh, I, if I do another one of these, I'm just going to put the harness in, I'm going to cut the plugs off that I don't need, and then I'll depin the opposite side from the ECM, and probably cut those ends off too, and call it good. Okay, there you have it. Uh, crunchy, lightly cleaned up harness. Uh, like I said, I have a bus bar coming for all of my grounds. That'll go straight to the battery. I will get some more tape. I'll finish up this jambalaya mess. But that's going to do it for this particular episode. I have to get this edited. I have to get it to you guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you could please like and subscribe, that would be amazing. Um, been growing pretty quickly so far this year, and I appreciate the shit out of it. Uh, all you new guys and gals, guys, uh, thank you for uh, sticking around, and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.